here we will be at 8 o'clock Eastern, but the game starts at 8.20 p.m. Eastern. San Francisco 49ers, 1-1, 0-1 oh on the road at Denver Broncos, 1-1, 1-0, home run Empower Field. A mile high, Denver, Colorado, 67 Fahrenheit, clear, 5 miles per hour. I'm looking forward to when weather starts changing things here, but not yet. Let's take a look at the line history in this one. This is a fascinating breakdown. I'm excited to talk about it. Also, obviously, these Niners are near and dear to my heart. We open up with the Niners plus two and a half. And they are now your favorites in this football game. Minus one. From a, And this is all pinnacle opening lines. So this was not pre-game last week. This total opened up at 45 and has dropped to 43. Let's take a look at the cash and see if it all correlates here. We have 20% line value according to Sports Insights on the San Francisco 49ers, and they've gone from dog to favorite. 11,512 tickets in, 82% of tickets, 93% of cash on the Niners. 61% of tickets, 82% of cash on the under. Niners had to deal with losing starting quarterback Trey Lance to a season-ending injury on the second drive of the game, and a lot of Niners fans are blaming Shanahan for it. Uh, you know, it just seemed like, he was calling the same play over and over and over again. Garoppolo came in and delivered right away. 13 and 21 for 154 yards and a touchdown. Ayuk had five catches for 63 yards. Debo, five catches for 44 yards. Ran four times for 53 yards. Jeff Wilson, 18 carries for 84 yards. Caught two passes for 19 yards. Nick Bosa, two sacks. 49ers got nine hits on Geno Smith. Deshaun Gibson, Javarius Ward, each had interceptions. Tyler Croft left the game in the second half, the tight end, and didn't return. That's important because Kyle Shanahan's had optimism that Kittle will play for three weeks now. So he has it again. Uh, we'll see if he does. Some interesting spots, though, for this Niners team that we must watch. There are two safeties, Hufanga and Gibson. Remember, Gibson's had four days before the preseason finale. have been their two highest-graded defenders through two weeks. This was a spot we thought they were very vulnerable. Now it's only been two games. Uh, left guard Aaron Banks and rookie right guard Spencer Burford have both earned the two highest passing pass blocking grades on the 49ers offensive line. And they have McGlinchey come back nicely from the quad injury last season. They've surrendered 285 yards, which puts them first in football, 285 a game. Now they haven't been tested, but will they be tested here? Broncos come in off a second straight lackluster performance in a 69 win at home over the lowly Texans to give Nathaniel Hackett his first NFL win. Wilson, 14 of 31, 219 yards, one touchdown, one pick. He opened the game by completing six of his first 20 passes, 0 for 4 in the red zone at Seattle on Monday night. Broncos twice drove inside the opponent's five-yard line, only come away with field goals. Cortland Sutton, seven passes he caught for 122 yards. Tyree Cleveland was the only other receiver to have more than one catch, two catches for 28 yards. Jerry Judy made one catch. Before suffering a rib injury, it made me sad as our friend Mr. Gogster had two player props on Judy. Uh, you know, one thing that really changed my ROI, Andy, uh, in, is about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I decided I would never bet a player prop again. And maybe that's too extreme. It's just that I really want to gamble. I really need to scratch that itch at times. And I had to be that forceful or they yeah. would just, you know, seat back in and we we you, it's so important to track all your action and, and I was my ROI was bad on player props so I just completely cut them out of my life but shout out to Sharpie who destroys them uh, and on our channel with his prize picks show Javante Williams ran 15 times for 75 yards Melvin Gordon 10 for 47 Draymond Jones had two sacks team finished with three sacks six quarterback hits so Pat Sertan played 25 snaps uh, he suffered a shoulder injury he was replaced by rookie Damari Mathis who actually looked pretty good, but it's a big loss. So the Broncos could see the return of two other starters, though. Inside linebacker Josie Jewell and offensive lineman Billy Turner. Jewell's been sidelined with a calf injury since the first week of practice in the regular season, and Turner's been gradually progressing from a knee injury. Hackett says the two are very close. Our Sunday night live game here on Pub Sports Radio. Andy, I can't wait to hear a breakdown. Take it away, Niners Broncos. Yes, yeah, Sertan and uh, Judy expected to play. That said, this, this move is correct. I have the Niners probably closer to – I'm going to have to double-check this, but I think I had them closer to four and a half on a neutral. So even in a road spot, and it is, it's tough to go to altitude. It's even tougher to do it early in the season. And it's maybe even tougher when you have a quarterback who – he didn't actually even practice with the team during the preseason. He was off working on another field separate from the team just so they could reinforce the idea that this is Trey Lance's team, guys. 
We don't have a competition. He's a guy who's going to get traded or be a backup here. I said it's not like he has to learn the offense. He's been around. He's taken this team pretty deep into the playoffs a couple times. Granted, that was based on the defense. This defense is still good. And anything nice you can say about the Broncos, which is tough to do to start with, they've played two. And just the way I've moved Atlanta, they've played the two worst teams in the league, according to my power rankings. And, he, and I, you know, even taking Houston's week one performance into account, but I have Seattle and Houston. Those are my two worst teams. Denver's offense has been hilariously bad considering what they paid Russell Wilson, what they decided to do with their draft picks these last few years, get all these pieces at wide receiver. Then they just sit and throw to the running back anyway and call these minus EV plays, the bad scheme, the bad play sequencing. And then they have a coach who's just, again, he's not ready. He's just not ready to manage a team and call plays. I think Hackett can maybe have some luck if he, hands off play calling to somebody else. I don't think he just can't multitask or something. They're having problems like, oh shit, we got to call a timeout in a dumb spot. Oh man, like it, we're, now we're going to punt instead of taking a field goal. The debacle in week one, we won't get into. So if Judy is not a hundred percent and still plays, like I, I worry that this offense doesn't get to like 10, 14, it's a tough, it's a tough, tough defense. Even defense travels, guys. And I make this closer to Niners minus three. So I have a small play on them at a at a pick 'em. I'd still play it at minus one. So I'm I'm playing another road uh, road favorite here. Although the the where they opened was kind of silly. Just all things considered, the, the coaching mismatch. Um. Uh, the only spot where I would give Denver the nod would be a quarterback, and they're just not using Russell in a way that you know highlights his abilities. So I'm I'm at a loss for why this isn't three. Minus one at minus one eleven available right now on the Niners. I feel like I just missed the boat here because I would have loved to have taken the Broncos team total under. But now it's moved to 21 and a half, and the Niners at 23 and a half, and it's okay to miss the boat, you know? Uh, Charles B says definitely under. Let's just take a look at this line history on this total once more. We have yeah, such a big step up in class for this the defense that Denver's about to play. The Denver team that, I mean, how, how many points did we get week one from them? Uh, seven, what is it? Uh, 16. 16. They lost 17-16 in week one. 16 points two weeks in a row, and now they go play the best defense they'll they'll face for the first part of the season. Have you fun. Know, Alfonso Scott says, still like the 21 and a half. This is my issue with this total, is that you have 61% of the tickets and 82% cash on the under, and yet it goes from 43 up to 46. Granted, some sharps may have said 46 is way too high and moved then, and it's dropped to 45. But – can you give me any angle, Andy, that Sharps could be looking at to move that total from – like why would the – so if you have so much money on the under, the books are saying we'll take all your under money. Why would they be doing that? I think maybe there's a sense that this Denver defense isn't very good either. Just, again, based on who they've played. We've seen, you know, how many points did Seattle put up in – you know, Seattle, I think maybe one of those was a, was one of those a defensive touchdown week one too, but um, you know, they, they've played two really kind of bottom of the barrel offenses so far and haven't really seen anything like the weapons the Niners will throw at them. So I, I wonder if they think the Niners are going to score more than, you know, what they're expected to in their team total as well. The Denver defense is just, I mean, middle of the pack to maybe a little below average for me. So uh, I, I don't fully understand the total move. I'm staying away from that. I just like the Niners. It's just such a, again, just such a coaching mismatch. We got a top five coach versus a guy who probably doesn't make it out of the out of season one. Like he he might just get left on the tarmac come week eighteen. I love I love the opportunity to live bet the game with all my friends and colleagues. So at this point, I'm not going to force any action. I feel like I've missed a line, and that's okay. I've got enough action, and I'll be there live, and the Broncos could score first, and we could attack. So at this point, 
I'm going to let it go. But Andy's on the 49ers at minus 111. I need to make sense of that total going up to 46. I have to before I can move on it comfortably and confidently. 